most commonly known Vipassana practice is based on breath and focus on the feeling at the tip of the nostril where the air touches. The Satipatthana Vipassana <coughs> practice or Satipatthana Meditation Society of Canada follows Mahasi Satipatthana Vipassana tradition which is also based on breath but focus on the feeling of the abdominal movement so location is different but it's the same one may practice either one However, the listener should be aware that SMSE, our talks, explanation, guidance, interviews, and Dharma talks, bridging between theory and practice, are based on the abdominal movement. <clears throat> so this practice we follow, let's have an overview of the practice. Observe and label mentally rising and falling movements of the abdomen while one is breathing normally. There are moments when there is no movement to observe. At that time, observe the sitting posture and touch sensation at any prominent point of the body. Observed from the beginning to the end of the rising movement. Observe from the beginning to the end of the falling movement. Two different one. Rising movement has its beginning and end. Falling movement has its beginning and end. Observe every part of it. Don't skip anything. During that observation, during that period, one may become aware of stiffness, tension, some pressure, or release of pressure, hollowed, empty feeling. These are all the manifestation of the when element manifestation of the wind element movement vibration and when these particular details arises 
be aware of them but you don't need to label it you don't need to label it but know it under the umbrella of rising or falling one will experience or know the form size, shape, color, the form or manners the way it moves quick, slow gently, wavy jacketly and the true nature during the observation of these movements seeing okay, when you say when I say seeing it is not actually physically seeing seeing mentally seeing with the mind eye keep that in mind seeing seeing and knowing specific characteristics of the mind and matter while it is arising which means must be at the present moment the time not before not after if you see or if you know the specific characteristics of the object while it is arising or at the present moment that is called knowledge and vision of seeing the ultimate realities knowledge and vision of seeing the ultimate realities in Pali Yatha Buddha Jnana short translation in English as it is as it is these are the ultimate realities specific characteristics and then once concentration becomes stronger due to the continuous uninterrupted mindfulness become very strong physical pain and mental pain will disappear and then the comfort will set in that comfort is called sukha mental bliss sukha will set in why does the sukha arise? it is due to tranquility the calm of the mind and the calm of the body and tranquility arise due to satisfaction and delight in the practice you're practicing and it is progressing you feel the difference and then you become satisfied at that moment satisfaction and delight in the practice that satisfaction and delight in the practice is called PT due to PT tranquility paucity arises and then this delight where does this come from this delight is due to gladdening Bamagja in Pati Bamagja gladdening and that gladdening arises due to clarity of mind clarity of mind or you can 
say absence of agitation and then this clarity of mind arises due to purity in morality sila usuddhi so we are going backward and telling how the sukha mental bliss arises taking it backward but if you want to look at it in a forward basis first and foremost you need purity in morality sila and as you have no nothing to worry about to be remorseful about to be concerned about the purity of morality give that at that moment suddenly your mind become very clear your mind become very clear clarity of mind because the mind has no disturbance agitation and when there's a clarity to mind you feel gladness gladdening and that gladdening is based on the progress and when you see that little progress you feel delighted you feel satisfied and once you have a satisfaction and delight the minds become calm and tranquil and finally tranquility will march into bliss purity of morality clarity of mind gladdening delight calm and bliss and when you have these sets of mental conditions you can see the ultimate realities very clearly specific characteristics of mind and matter so to practice mindfulness insight meditation requires eight full noble path because that is the blueprint or worksheet for the practice eight full noble path this eight full noble path can be put into three groups morality group concentration group and wisdom group all together eight constituents but they can be put into three groups so in morality group right speech and then right deed and the right livelihood those three falls under morality group your speech a uh, honest straightforward gentle polite and kind your deeds are totally free from violence non violence no hurting no harming the deeds and livelihood you don't make your livelihood based on somebody else hurts or harm somebody else taking advantage on somebody else 
In other words, your livelihood contains five percepts. That is the right okay, sila group, the three of them. Right speech, right deed, right livelihood. Sama wasa, sama kamanda, sama ajiwa. That's a morality group. Next group is concentration group. Concentration group, samadhi. And again, under this samadhi group, there are three of them. One is right effort. And the next one is right mindfulness. And the third one is right concentration. This is the walk horse. This is where you apply all your effort. You apply all your effort to be continuously mindful, building up the momentum of mindfulness so that there's no gap, no break. And at that moment, Concentration comes hand in hand and built and becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. This is a walking group. Morality group is more like a refraining group, refraining from hearts and harms and violence. This one is walking group. And the third and final group is called Binya or Wisdom Group. Under the Wisdom Group, there are two. One is Right View, Samadhi, and the other one is Right Thought. Right Thought. Samasinkapa. And here, we pen a little bit of expanded on the right thought. What are the right thought? Thought doesn't contain cruelty, violence, in other words, ill will. Thoughts doesn't contain wicked greed. free of violence, free of greed. In other words, covetousness and ill will. That's a right thought. In other words, you think about loving kindness, compassion, and sympathetic joy. Those are the right thoughts. You think about tranquility or equanimity. Those are the right thoughts. Of course, these are, you can keep on talking and talking. But we are talking about the actual practice we are practicing. How does this right thought present in the actual practical field? In the actual practical field is the mind is always inclined towards the object that is arising at the moment. You can say the mind is always inclined towards the object that is arising at the present moment. Or you can say the mind is always adverting or turning towards the object that is arising at the present moment. Or you can say the mind is always aiming 
at the object that is arising at the moment. I think that will cover what the right thought means. Because if one is simply aiming or adverting or inclining the mind towards the object, at that moment there is no violence. At that moment, There is no ill will. At that moment, there is no covetousness. At that moment, the mind is totally in the state of equanimity or balance. Totally balance. That balanced state of mind is wisdom. Totally balanced from the two extremes. That's the right thought. Samasankapa. So, that is the final group. Samadeti and Samasankapa. We have talked about Samadeti a lot. So, I won't go too much detail into it. Vipassana practice requires Eightfold Noble Path. What are they? Right view, right thought, right speech, right deed, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Those are the eight. If you have these eight constituents, you are on the right path. If your practice contains these eight constituents, you will eventually come face to face with Nibbana. Now, we are practicing why do we need to practice? Because we are full of mental defilements, kilesa, loba, dosa, and moha, greed, anger, and delusion. But for the practice, Buddha break down that into five groups. They are called five hindrances. Pinchya, niwarana. In Cha is five, Niwarana is hindrances. The five hindrances they are always blocking your progress. They were always blocking the build up of concentration. In other words, it's opposing force to what we would like to achieve. So Buddha put it specifically in this five because these are the most common and the most powerful forces that works against your progress of your practice. What are they? The first one is Kama Chanda Niwarana. Sense desire. Sense desire is a hindrance. What is a sense desire? Sense desire has two components. One is a, an actual object. It could be physical or it could be mental. Actual object. In other words, desirable object. That's one. Kama guna, sense object. And another one is craving, dhatna. Okay, craving, dhatna, which is kilesa kama. You need these two to have sense desire, the desirable object and craving. When these two 
come together sense desire arise and this sense desire always block concentration and hinder the progress of your practice when sense desire arise just note it three four times till that sense desire dissolve it might be a form that mean you can say seeing it might be a sound it might say hearing but note it label it three four times seeing 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 hearing 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 pleasant 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 till that desire dissolve when you become aware of it they simply dissolve by itself and once it dissolve go back to the default object which is rising movement and falling movement so that is one hindrance the next hindrance is called byabada niwarana hindrance of ill will ill will also hinders your progress here is you need the undesirable object object that you don't like and the craving the craving is you crave to eliminate it you crave to destroy it you crave to push it away from you in other words aversion or anger undesirable object and an aversion towards it when these two met that hindrance of ill will arises simply say ill will arises this ill will is rough and violent because of that rough mind coarse mind violent mind appears and when these kind of violent mind appears they appear very violent one appear as a as a vision in a picture you can call it we call it but as a vision a picture they are so intense your anger is so intense and pali gives another name patika so that vision that you see is called patika namita the pictures the anger is so intense you see as a picture even up to that level it can arise in your meditation and that will destroy your concentration your meditating concentration is pretty good and suddenly some pictures of vision come in related with the intense anger and your concentration is gone so at that moment if that's a vision just note seeing 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 till it disappear they come back again note again they come back again note again till they disappear or simply if it is not so intense unpleasant feeling arises if unpleasant feeling is like call it aversion arises anger arises ill will arises and if that the case just note as anger anger ill will ill will unpleasant unpleasant till it just dissolve and if it is too strong they don't go away apply wise attention 
some time you note and go away if they don't go away use wise attention you only summon a sikara don't go into the content of the story of course that makes you angry you just say wow basically this is the the nature of the mind this is the real nature of the angry mind this is the true nature of the mind I'm experiencing the true nature of the mind as they really are that kind of wise attention you applied it and go back again till those thoughts those feelings those vision doesn't disturb you anymore they don't arise anymore that is the Bhyabhada Niwarana and the third one is called in Pali Tina Meda Niwarana English sloth and topper basically it is the sluggishness of the mind, the shrinking mind, the foggy mind. And when these kind of sluggish, shrinking and foggy mind arises, they burn up your energy, they burn up your effort. You become very weak and helpless. Your pride to slow down. So that is the Medha. Or sloth in English. Another one is torpor, T O R P O R. Sloth and torpor. So, okay. Let me explain again. Topper is a mental state. Topper is a mental state that produces sluggishness, lack of energy, and sleepiness. Mental state means jadasika. Topper. In Pali, Medha is a Jadasika, mental factors. It produces sluggishness, lack of energy, and sleepiness. And this torpor eventually leads to sloth. Sloth in Pali is Tina. Topper eventually leads to sloth, which is the sluggishness of the consciousness. The first one is of the mental factors, just a sika. This one is the sluggishness of the consciousness, jeta. Topper belongs to mental factors. Slot belongs to consciousness. Of course, there are, Buddha taught us, 11 different ways of how to overcome these things. But that is uh, another topic. So when these slot and topper comes in, it just totally put a stop on your practice not just concentration you just go fall asleep eventually and the next hindrance is called restlessness and remorse Kokucha, Dokucha, Niwarana ok 
Okay, restlessness is uh, basically a distracted mind. And this distracted mind is constantly moving from one object to the other without staying much longer. They hover over and just move on and move on and move on. And remorse. Remorse is the regretting what you have done in the past or regretting that you missed doing something that you should have done. Those two conditions give rise to remorse. The same thing when you are in a remorse, the mind just go round and round and round and round these events. And the antidote is forgiveness. First of all, forgive yourself. And then also forgive the person, depending on the condition. Not only that you forgive, after that forgiveness is thoroughly done, you make a resolution. I will never commit this again. I will never do these kind of things again. Forgiveness and resolution not to repeat the same mistake. That's an antidote for remorse, for restlessness. Observe that unsettling nature, agitation, Feel it, observe it, watch it till it settles down. And the next one is called Vichikecha Niwarana, skeptical doubt. The fifth and the final one. If one harbors skeptical doubt, on the Buddha, Dharma, the teaching, Sangha, monks who are carrying out their duties to teach the Dharma, what Buddha has taught. And also doubt in yourself that you lack the ability to do, don't have much confidence in yourself. If that's the case, even though you are practicing, you won't be able to develop the required intensity of concentration. So that you can see the true nature of mind and matter. And if you have these doubts, if you have these doubts, any endeavor you carry it out is already doomed to fail. So, doubt, we say Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. Let's go through that little bit. You have doubt in Buddha. Doubt in Buddha is we can arm with a lot. But let's go very specific. You have doubt that Buddha has no teacher. He taught himself. He understands all these things by himself. Sama Sambuddha. Self enlightenment. He attained enlightenment. Know all these things without anybody teaching him. And if you have that, if you don't believe it, then you have a doubt in Buddha. If you have doubt in Buddha, automatically you have doubt in his teachings. 
because the teachings come from the person who taught. And if you have doubts and dharma, all the sangha, the monks, who are carrying out the duties, which mean teachings, what Buddha has taught the dharma to everybody who wants to learn, know, are interested. You also have doubts in the sangha. So once you have doubts in Buddha, it goes to the Dharma, it goes to the Sangha. It's just like a, a stream flowing down. And also in Sangha, there's you should pick two parts. When you say Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, that Sangha is Ariya Sangha. Monks who have already have the being on the noble path, Ariya, noble path. The first noble person, second noble person, third noble person, fourth noble person, Ariya Sangha. And most of the monks that we see nowadays, but we don't know for sure, but one thing sure is all these monks are we call it the relatives of the Ariya Sangha. Relatives of the Ariya Sangha. But we don't know who really is Ariya and who is not Ariya. So we pay the same kind of respect to every monk that we meet. We don't discriminate them. We don't try to find their faults or find their virtues. We just simply, across the board, pay the same respect. Of course, there are some monks that you'd like to associate and learn from, and there are some monks you don't like to associate and you don't want to learn from. Then you just keep aside or approach. But in general, pay the same kind of respect to all monks because you don't know who is who. And if there's an offense made to the Ariya Sangha, that offense is quite severe consequences in the line of karma. So, to resolve how can we resolve? You have doubt. How can we resolve these issues? To resolve the issues, you have to start with, let's call it faith, but not a blind faith. Faith or confidence. Actual word is sada. Develop faith or confidence in Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha based on whatever available information you have about Buddhism. Study it, make your own assessment, make your own analysis. That's where you start. At least you are making a decision, informative decision. Decisions is thoroughly informed. That's the start point. And from that starting point, you can build up this sada. And then you keep on practicing along the practice, you will uncover what the Buddha has said. And if they coincide exactly as you experience, your confidence grow and grow and grow. Confidence, sadda, is not static. It is increasing or it can also decrease. Doubt will give you uh, the actual account of doubt at the times of Buddha. Okay. Buddha was 
practicing in the forest alone for actually six years, going through all the austerity program, whatever is being known at that time, at that place, in that region. Practice meditation, jhana, anything and everything what the world has offered and what he has heard. Especially austerity program. And there are five monks or five ascetic, not monks, ascetic. They look at the Buddhist practice and they were quite impressed. So they stay around and look after him. They look after him. But on the sixth year, from their point of view, the Buddhist changed. He gave up and he started eating a little bit of ragu. Well, let's say um, rice with like overcooked rice with milk. One of the lady called Sujata come and offer because Buddha is at that time just bone and skin. And he accepted and he start eating it. And then from the five ascetic point of view he's starting to relax. That is when Buddha really discover his own method, the middle path. We call it the middle path, Mijima Patipata. The middle path practice. So, to make the long story short, those five have said it. Ah, this Gautama is a lost cost. Gautama is the family name. Lost cause. So they, they left. They left some distance away in another forest and they went and practiced. And the Buddha keep on practicing his this discovery. Finally he attained, understand the full noble truth by himself. He construct this eightfold noble thought, how to practice, he got attained, enlightened. So once he got enlightened, he looked around, of course, with the mind eye. Who should I teach? First and foremost, he thought about a teacher. There are two teachers who taught him one to the seven jhanic level and another one to the even to the point of direction to the point of ninth jhanic level. Even though those concentration meditation samatha doesn't give any liberation, he's grateful to these teachers because those teachers ask him to stay with them and give and give half of their university co-president. You uh, look at one and one has they both have passed away and they look at where he is and they are in a Brahma room where they cannot hear the Dharma where they cannot see the Buddha so he just oh, okay and who's next and he remembered these five ascetic so he followed them to where the forest is and they went and when they see the Buddha oh They are talking to the, hey, there's a, not here, they don't call him a Buddha yet at that time. Oh, there's Gautama coming, the loser. Gautama is coming. Just don't talk to him. Just ignore him. They talk among the set. Buddha came and sat at a suitable place near them. And they were just, no, I'm not going to talk to him, the loser there. But the presence of the Buddha is so strong, they can't help. They turn around and talk with him. And he said he was going to deliver a sermon. But they have doubt. They have doubt in the Buddha. They have doubt in the Buddha. He cannot be a Buddha because he has already started eating and relaxing from the practice because austerity program is the 
the top-notch program that people know in that area around that time in the world. And the Buddha said he knows that these five sides of doubt doubt to the Buddha. He said, okay, here, I know you have doubt in me, but I am the enlightened one. I am the enlightened one. I am the Buddha. The Buddha is a title. He who knows. I am the enlightened one. Okay, just one food for a thought. I'm just paraphrasing, of course. Food for a thought. In that six years while you were attending me, have I ever said that I have enlightened? He said, no, never say. But now I declared that I am enlightened. I am Samasambuddha, one who has taught himself and knows. I'm the Buddha. And that erased their doubt. Oh, he has a point. And as soon as they began to think, he has a point, he could be right, suddenly doubt changed into belief. They have some confidence. So at that moment, when they are, minds are filled with confidence. The Buddha start preaching. The first sermon, turning of the wheel of Dharma, the Macheka Pavutana. And at the end of that discourse, on the, not at the end of the first day, the first month, the first ascetic, sorry, his name is Asaji. He became a, the first stream winner, the first noble person. And the Buddha keep on talking, and every day, one person, one person, one person. Then the fifth day, the fifth person become first stream winner. And when they become all first stream winner, the Buddha taught the second sermon, Anatta Lakana, discourses, discourse on non-self. And at the end of the discourse, all these five ascetics became Arhat, okay. Bhikkhu, the first five followers of Buddha. There's doubt. If there's a doubt, you cannot overcome. Even the first five followers of the Buddha has doubt at the beginning. You have to erase the doubt first. So that's a little story related to doubt. Skeptical doubt. Wichikecha. So, to clear doubt, listening to Dharma talks is the first step. Then, of course, after that, one must put effort and practice to verify the Dharma that you have heard by yourself. Practice is the verification process of the Dharma you have heard. Otherwise, one will be engaging with distracted mind and won't be able to develop concentration, samadhi. Buddhism is the only religion where the founder, the Buddha, invited everyone to come and see and test, investigate, challenge 
just that come and see, come and listen, come and challenge, investigate yourself. before you take it into your heart, before you take it into your belief. The Buddha said, don't believe blindly. First of all, you test, you investigate, you challenge. And only when you are satisfied, you take it into your heart. So, overcoming five hindrances is the key to liberation. To overcome it, one must base on morality group. Then apply concentration group and complete with wisdom. May all of you be able to practice mindfulness, insight, meditation, and may you be able to overcome five hindrances and attain liberation as soon as possible. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much.